Our guest speaker certainly exemplifies the entrepreneurial spirit. A leader in the communications field, Mr. Sterling has certainly shown that Canada and Newfoundland in particular can provide a wealth of opportunities for the budding entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere pleasure and privilege to present Mr. Jeff Sterling. Well, I appreciate being um, invited. I didn't so much as want to make a speech as much as answer questions. Uh, when you think that if of the 244,000 Newfoundland entrepreneurial people who could exist, who are the total workforce of Newfoundland, we just discussed it, 244,000. Well, two men who started Amway hired 250,000. In other words, just two men who decided to be entrepreneurial and started a credible product for cleaning up just basic things. It's, it's headquartered in Michigan, and the two of them hire 250,000 people. If 50% of our 244,000, for example, could create two jobs, you got full employment. If 20%, you cut it down, and you say at a certain percentage, if only 25% of us can create five jobs, we got full employment. If you can get 30,000 bed and breakfasts, which would give 60,000 jobs for the man and his wife and the son. And all of the various elements that we maximize our potential in this incredibly large province. You know that Quebec is three times the size of France. Ontario is five times the size of California. California has more population than the total population of Canada. And they have two Senate seats. And Wyoming, with smaller population than Newfoundland, have two Senate seats, which is the fundamental principle of the free enterprise system, and that's democracy and equality. If you don't have that, you have nothing. And the key thing is my opinion to say to yourself as 38 individuals sitting in the room, how many, by the way, were born in Newfoundland? How many were born um, in Quebec? How many were born in Ontario? How many were born in British Columbia? How many in Calgary? How many in the United States? So once again, how many in Newfoundland? Do you mind? Because it's important for my in... Fantastic. Well, I, I've always felt sorry for people who weren't born as Newfoundlanders. I don't know why. I guess it was because so many of my, my friends, I went to high school in England and I went to college in the United States and I went to grammar school in Newfoundland. And the more I traveled and the more I saw people and individuals seeing them all the same, the more I realized that all we need is input. All we need is confidence. The biggest and most difficult thing in Newfoundland is our confidence. We've, t we've been told we live on an island. Well, Bell Island's an island. If you told someone in Japan they lived on an island, they'd laugh at you. But Japan is no bigger than Newfoundland. They've got 136 million people. We're, do you know, anybody ever think how big you are compared to Israel? You're 900 times bigger than Israel. You're three times Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. You're bigger than Arizona. You're bigger than every state in the Union except Alaska and Texas. And you're almost as big as Texas. But we've been told you live on a rock. Can you see all of us standing on one big rock? That's the biggest thing, I think, in deciding what you want to be is entrepreneurial. You've got to do something you love. You really want to do it. It's not hard to be successful when you find something you really, truly want to do. And you become introspective enough and analytical enough to really and truly ask yourself, and it's, it's very difficult between 16 and 22 or 23 or 24, to focus on what you really get off on. It's, it's, we, we've never asked ourselves, we've said go out and look for a job. Well, that's ludicrous. Go out and look for a job doing what? Something you don't like and get trapped <clears throat> with a big low on the floor and two or three Chesterfields and they trap you for the rest of your life like they do in New York. 
with a two or three hundred thousand dollar salary in a, in a polluted town where you take four hours of pollution to get home and you call yourself a vice president you clap yourself in the back it's all relative your lifestyle is the most important thing in your life your life what are you going to have, do with the next 20 years of your life? Most people never project. Entrepreneurial is the one area where you've got to be willing to take responsibility. You've got to be willing to say, when I did, I came back and I thought, what can I do? I have no capital. My dad isn't very wealthy. What can I do when I came back from college? And I thought, well, if I can get a printer to give me, and I had $1,000 to print something that's going to sell, then I can break through. So I wrote every word in the Newfoundland Herald, from cover to cover, with the exception of four columns. I was 22, and the creative uh, trade printers gave me credit for three issues, and we were sold out. And I was out of it, because I had no intention of working for anybody. I'd rather go down to South America and pick up coconuts, or get beach rocks, and put Gilbrand's sayings on the beach rocks, and make them to lay on paperweights or do what they've done up in Cowhead and other places where they've got where they've got lobster shells. Some guy has made more money from the lobster shells developing little characters. I'm sorry I didn't bring one along here. Have anybody seen these? Has anybody in the room seen these little characters made out of lobster shells with a muscle for a southwester? <laughs> and they sell for fourteen seventy five. Twice as much as the lobster did. <laughs> it's the same with scallop shells. If you go to Jap uh, Japan, the first thing that struck me in Japan the second or third time, and they trusted me enough to show me some of the stuff, was the incredible things they were doing with scallop shells. And we're up to our ears in scallop shells because they've thrown them away and they took the scallop out. Out in Marystown, I saw underwater a pile of scallop shells about four feet high. Well, it's all jewelry potential. If we could see the invisibles in Newfoundland, right now, we're all doing this because we can't get cod. We got in cod for 500 years until they came in and, and did everything else with technology and wiped us out to get the last fish in the oceans, they say. Well, we haven't spent the 500 years going after scallops. We haven't spent the fi last 500 years going after escargot. We haven't last, which is snails. We haven't last the, the loss, gone after seaweed. In, in, in Japan, one of the supermarkets, the entire two things was different kinds of seaweed bottled and shredded. And it was very expensive because it's so nutritious. When you think the average person eats three to five pounds a day of food, and those of you who are mathematically intent can give it 365 multiplied by five real fast and know that that's a ton, right? That you're passing through your body, wearing out your body. Every five years, passing through five tons. Well, that's not a person, that's a tapeworm, right? <laughs> well, the last addiction is food. Nobody wants to hear about it. Last person wants to hear about it is, is your mother. <laughs> You're not eating today? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't freak her out. Just get it out quietly into a handkerchief and give it to the dog. <laughs> hey. The amount of body fluids you need is at least 10 glasses of clear water a day. Everybody who's in the scientist class is well aware that 90% of their brain, which is a 58 ounce organism, that 90% of it is hydrogen and oxygen. Now, as we try to conceive the inconceivable, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to conceive the inconceivable. You've got to have a brain cell prepared for it. If I do a heavy rap on UFOs, I can watch the faces and the, and the body language. And if you haven't a brain cell prepared, even to consider it, the minute you crystallize your brain cells into, re into accepting the past, there are no longer little children coming into the potential kingdom where they can be taught new material, new observation avant-garde, neophobia, which the French is avant-garde, but neophobia is fear of change. Try it if you're still living with your mother. Move the furniture around in your favorite room <laughs> and wait and see what happens in the morning. I don't want particularly to make a, a rap because when you've got 38 Newfoundlanders or 
27 Newfoundlanders and 10 mainlanders come from away. Uh, I'd rather answer questions if you got any questions. Specific questions. You know, I mean, I'll go on for as long as you want. I'll talk about any subject you want me to talk about. Those I don't know anything about, I'll turn over to someone who does. <laughs> but is there any questions? I mean, is there any specific direction you want my, my talk to go on how to make money? How to get out of the trap you're in? Or not necessarily in. How to uh, make it yourself? It's good to bring a group together. I, I always try to go for four women and three men to give the balance, the, the electricity in the room. You've got four women and three men, and the women can do it the other way around if they want to, but it's a totally chemistry balance to put an organism together that can, can, can cover all the bases. One, want, one is the front person who enjoys being in front of the camera. One is a director. One is a producer. One is the script writer, okay? One is the casting director. I don't know if any of you got these things we're trying to do to uh, stimulate creativity during the summer months, and we have a $10,000 contest. Has anybody got a form? Has any, anybody sent for a form? One. Okay. Well, that's not bad. If we get two out of 100, because making, and we offered to lend the camera that you could put together your project and then make it work. And there's a tremendous amount of projects available now with small loans and grants. I mean, for example, if you're doing uh, video, video weddings, or you, you make a deal with a video store, and you can make uh, uh, spaghetti or pizza, you order video and pizza together. That's why the maximization of all the invisibles is so important. I tried to get a guy, I offered to do it free through the night for two weeks who had, a, who had a, to tie together a taxi, deliver the pizza and the video. He wasn't interested. You know, you can only waste your energy so long to drag them screaming into the 22nd century. There comes a moment when you say, my God, like Pontius Pilate, right? Because it's very hard to get through the people who don't want to take responsibility. The biggest problem I have in Newfoundland isn't starting new businesses, isn't creating new jobs is finding people willing to say, yes, sir, I'll do it, and I'll do it better than you told me, and I'll make it work. And all I'm asking you to do is give me $10,000 worth of free advertising to stimulate the water in the pump. And I said, we'll give you credit for a year, then we'll either write you off as a, a deadbeat, or we'll eventually get our money. But we'll give you the amount of money to prime, the, the amount of advertising to prime the pump. Anything you start, if it's a good product or a good service, and we give you an advance of 12 months of advertising as a young entrepreneur coming out of MUN into entrepreneurial thing. Not only will we give you that, but we'll sit around and wrap out all the angles to make sure it works. Because it's the only thing it takes is your confidence and a little support system. So you're not all by yourself. It's not, it's not very much fun all by your lonesome, no matter how successful you are. It's fun to have some other people around with you. As we discussed in Cowhead, a a, there's no reason why the craft shops, surely God, have got to close in September. Surely we can keep a craft shop open and build a craft shop in our studio. And any Newfoundlander who wants to send in crafts, once a week we'll sell them. Any artist who wants to send us a 35 millimeter photograph of his painting with how much he wants for it, we can sell it. I mean, we can do a, if you're really ambitious and we want to go global, we can get a, a second transponder and reach 400 billion people. Surely, God, we can sell something. For us to throw away male Kaplan by the tons? I mean, it blows my mind. And there's not a cat food place, in the, a, cat, a tin cat food in Newfoundland. Go down to any supermarket in Newfoundland and find <coughs> one, one fish product made in Newfoundland on the shelf. I've never found one yet. Korean scallops, I mean, <laughs> sardines from Nova Scotia. There's nothing. Now that the Capelin are small, let's call them sardines and put them in tins. There's no, <laughs> there's no end to it. I mean, cat food has got to be a two or three million dollar import. While we've got anything we can grind up in fish and it's a lot healthier for our cats, like male Kaplan, if the Japanese only want the female so they can squeeze out and calm the people, it's, it's caviar. Which is what they, it's what they do, right? <laughs>
Yes, but. They never say no in Japan. Yes, but, Mr. Sterling. Fantastic. They haven't forgotten that our friends who live close to us, north of us, south of us, dropped two atomic bombs on them. It's funny, isn't it? Do you want to say that? Mr. Sterling, when you were a young man, did you, um, I, didn't, I know, like, when you start your own business, there's certain anxieties that you, I know you have confidence, and obviously you're, you're exhibiting a lot of confidence there, but there must have been some times when you said, geez, you know, can I do this or, or not? I'm I anxiety to... that it's going to fail? Yeah. Never entered my head. Never? No. <clears throat> what Not in the slightest. What do you do to keep yourself on such a level, you know, operating at a level of success that... You uh... get educated in the United States. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big difference. Everybody... See, Canada has two distinctive philosophical, ideological positions. One is the closet position, known as the socialist communist. The other one is the out position, willing to be entrepreneurial. There's two people. You'd be surprised how heavy the socialistic aspect is. I mean, for 12 years, I've been trying to make the point with the regulators of television that, listen, fellas, is it really fair for these guys over here to use my taxes, 25 million a year, to compete directly against me with soap operas bought in the United States while I'm having to run Canadian program against their American soaps and 12 years be making the state, trying to make the point is not fair, trying to do it through the system, being laughed at because there is, Canada doesn't believe in heroes. Canada's an anti-hero situation. There's one hero and he's got a bad back and he's got sucked into buying the Alouettes. <laughs> which will take all his salary. The poor guy, Wayne Gretzky. He's the one hero, right? Who else have we got? Is there another hero you'd like to mention in, in, the, in a business hero, for example? Name me one. What about a, uh, well, it's not heroes. We're not, we don't dig heroes. We dig groups and committees, endless committees, endless, endless investigations. <laughs> and then we just put it away. It's a funny country, but when you analyze what we are, we call ourselves Canadians. Well, you have Newfoundlanders who for 500 years had a distinct society, and then you have Quebecers who have an area three times the size of France and think they could be more successful. Seeing Iceland as 200,000 people and is one of the most successful sovereign countries in the world, and then you got Ontario, which is five times the size of California, who think they could be successful too, to say nothing of the West. So here we are made up of all this multitude of people. And I'm trying to find somebody to go in front of a television camera and tell me why I should vote yes. So I can pay twice as much taxes. So I can uh, have endless regulations that don't exist in the United States. Not that I'm suggesting for a second you join the United States. Not in, in no way. Because we're a distinct <coughs> society. Maybe we can come out of this endless constitutional problem. But why is it so important after 125 years we haven't had it? And certainly to give forever Newfoundland into the hands of two provinces where we have 137 votes and the rest of them have 210, even if the Senate is 100% for us, doesn't make sense. So we're being bullied into an election on the 26th when the pu public themselves, like yourselves, the intellectuals and the elitists of the society, if I ask each one of you to come up in front now of the, of, of the cameras and tell me what is it and what's the key issues on the constitutional yes or no vote, who, anybody want to volunteer? Hmm? Just imagine, you as citizens of a nation which is an incredible country. Canada is an incredible potential. But it has got this schizophrenic mind where it doesn't like free enterprise. It doesn't like you guys. In fact, it will grant our cow votes to your competitors so they can destroy you if they have to. It's a very funny country. Regulations where guys can steal all my programming and sell it to all you guys in this room and I don't get a nickel. 
and steal all the CBC programs too. That they pay hundreds of millions of dollars to in the course of a, a year. But they can steal it. And then if you dare transfer it to another room in your house, they can have the Mounties take you away. <laughs> if it was gasoline, they'd all be in jail. If it was electricity, they'd all be in jail. But it happens to be 350 dots traveling through the ether, retransformed by electronics into a picture called television. So they can steal it across the border from Detroit, put it up with the Canadian government's consent and come down and sell it to you guys and make $200 million a year and have a big enough lobby to make it stick. Like the Kennedy assassination after 29 years, 85% of the population are convinced he was assassinated, which means that every CIA and CIA director would be in on it, right? Including the President of the United States, Bush, former CIA director. Well, nobody wants to talk about these things. It isn't fashionable. You won't get elected. There's not enough people free enough to elect you. They're all beholden to somebody. That's why a free enterprise and entrepreneurial people you and this, I don't know what the student body is totally in this university. What is it, 10,000? 17. Fantastic. Well, ASU was 46,000. That's where my son graduated, my daughter. And I've talked to the entrepreneurial class here, and it's 7,000. So think of the percentage. Because everybody in the United States wants to be entrepreneurial. They don't want to work for somebody. What for? You're going to get 15% of your energy. You're going to get a, maybe a gold clock someday. That's why we try to make it as democratic as possible at NTV and Oz. And we try to say, look, fellas, if you want to be entrepreneurial, step out of the union and we'll form little companies and we'll put up money because if you want, we, we, we try to break the mold. And it's very difficult, very difficult. In the businesses I've been in, in other places, in the United States and uh, Wash, New York City, where I worked and so on, when I first got out of college, it's a different attitude. There's a tremendous confidence. And I can see why we don't have the confidence, because we don't have a history of at least 100 years where every one of our fathers had a permanent job. There's a big difference in the attitude in Corner Brook and Grand Falls. We have had permanency. It's hard to have a family that's seasonal. That's why right now in the moratorium, it's such a glorious opportunity for men to see it as a renaissance, where they start to say, what other talents have I got? If, I can, if this guy can make uh, uh, these little men out of, out of, out of uh, uh, lobster claws, maybe we can get a, a, a sock industry that can create a, two million socks in the homes and sweaters and artifacts and so on and we can sell on television so we can bring it together but I don't know where to reach out to I honestly don't I'm trying I mean I, I gave one guy a, a cash thing to do a series of of concerts at the penitentiary six months later I found they were never paid I mean it's it's difficult it's difficult to try to have a creative a heavy heavy aggressive uh, when it's needed uh, input into us to start something. I mean, we could start, everyone in this room, there's 50 of us, we could put up $100 or $50 or $5, and we could start by going, one of you could go to Thailand, Hong Kong, wherever, and bring back one sample of the one thing that's impressed you the most, with an understanding of whoever produces it, that they could supply and they would mail direct so all you got to do is go on television and say, here's this fantastic thing. It costs this much, and we'll give you six to eight weeks delivery. So all you have to have in your inventory is one item. Then if you've got a 1,000 or 2,000 or 20,000 orders, you send to the guy in Hong Kong, and hopefully, if, you got to, if he's straight, I mean, this is the problem. <laughs> this is the problem. He better send them to you first, COD, and you got them, and then you distribute them. There's got to be an answer to it. I, I don't want to lay on a trip that's not straight, because being right with any deal is being right right now. If we're not right, right now, regardless of what you want to do, everything will get worse.
But if you're right right now, if we say, okay, how do we do this? Well, one guy or two guys to go to Thailand, you don't even need to do that. You go to Ottawa and you get and you tell the story to the Thai ambassador, the Russian, the, all the ambassadors. In fact, you write a letter on a computer, you, you move it back. And there's nothing you can't do from this point with faxes. And then you set in motion. It's important to set in motion things. That's why a group is fun. Because when you disperse here tonight, you go in your little groups, and we all sort of motivate. We're all Roman Catholics, so we hang out together. We're Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> or we're Salvation Army, where I was born, the Salvation Army Hospital. So we're all Salvation Army. We beat the drum, and we don't rush you guys in, right? I'm kidding. We're all here together. We're all here together. Color is, a, is, is abstract. I, I, I've never figured out why they don't think white is a color. Because we're all, we're all color, we're all race, we're all thinkers, and we all got the same 58-ounce brain, which is 90% hydrogen and oxygen. As you go through your litany of what and who we are, we start to see through the illusions we've been created, the bigotry that's being created, the anti-this and the anti-that is being created, to try to fragment us. The fragment is not that there's, this, this is a one planet. Buckmaster Fuller talked, anybody read Spaceship Earth? Buckmaster Fuller, Spaceship Earth? Well, Buckmaster Fuller simply got his perception at college by looking at the planet as the astronauts did and looked at this planet with self-generating spaceship with up to 12 miles around at oxygen and just imagine oxygen and hydrogen and as they say in, in India when after five or six trips to the Himalayas they say you know vegetarianism is your first move then you have fruitarianism then you have breatharianism that's it yourself reliant that's conceiving the inconceivable and that's the fun of it because there's if we're in eternity there's no beginning and ending I mean we don't all end up in the clouds playing bingo <laughs> huh? I mean, surely we're not up there with a harp for eternity. God, you'll be bored to death in the third day, right? This is eternity. This is the here and now. I hate to say that because of the CBC, CBC got that one at six thirty. And now, and now there's a now there's a sit comedy out. There's no end to it. But it's it's like it's like uh, it's like uh, um, Huxley's Island. Uh, which is so, so incredibly interlocked with what's happening in Newfoundland now, where, where they, had, they had a perfect society and then oil was discovered off the coast and slowly destroyed completely the, the lifestyles and so on. It's called Island. On that island, Alex Huxley's, they train the parrots to try to remind you, here and now, here and now, try to remind you to be in the now. Not thinking about tomorrow, as Ram Das said, I used to constantly think about, he said, I tried to get my weight down from 260, realizing that every four ounces, actually it's every 16 ounces, every 16 ounces of flesh is eight miles of capillaries, arteries, and veins. So if you're 10 pounds overweight, it's eight, 80 miles that your blood has to go through the brain. So if I'm sitting and negotiating with some guy who's got an 80-mile trip because he's 10 pounds overweight, I have an advantage. <laughs> and so does everybody else in this room. Because knowledge is power. The only reason you guys are here at this university, I should imagine, is you want to get some power through the knowledge. Isn't that the point, or is that too naked a, a truth. We're here because we want to become altruistic. <laughs> I guess to be at a public hearing once. He said, what was your motivation? I said, to make money. He said, you can't be serious. Canadian, right? You can't be serious. <laughs> I said, look, man, I've got 350 employees i got to pay on Friday. You can't be serious by questioning my motive. This was a public hearing. This was some guy who never, did, never created a job in his life. He got out of college. He, he did a lot of legislation as a lawyer. He then left the legislation and went back into regulation to take you through the regulation to get you out of trouble. Hmm? That's the game in Ottawa. To a certain extent, lesser again. In other words, you write the legislation. If you've got a 200 page of legislation and you've got one line to get you off the hook, that's worth a few million dollars in a big company, right? Big law firm. 
put it mildly. If I'm elected tomorrow morning, and you're on my committee, and I say, gentlemen, I will give this guy, you've got five million a year for helicopter service, 20 years. You can go down to the bank, you can show them the slip that the government has given you five, 20 years at five million, which is 100 million, and you can take the rest of these guys and hire them, right? Because all you gotta do is, is rent a hangar, make two phone calls in New York and lease 25 helicopters, and you're in business. I have created $25 million. See, the minute you are elected and you're the head of the government, you have the power to create money by using your authority. Now, mind you, you increase the debt at the same time. But as Joey Smallwood once said to me, I hope I'm dead before they find out, right? <laughs> he said it humorously, because that's the way it is. We create all of these big projects. If you create a regulation, you create regulators. The GTS tax created dozens and dozens of additional people. If you create a regulation, you create regulator. If you create a regulator, you create an empire because you had to have buildings to put the creators, regulators in, right? Now go to Ottawa and look at the empires, all these great big huge buildings. Go in at 11.30 and try to find somebody except the cafeteria. I did. For two hours I'm trying to find someone to step a passport. From 11.04, I got all on tape wandering through the corridors of empty bureaucracies in Toronto. Because if I'm going to go, I may as well make a movie out of it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question, really, of having a group of, and, and that's what happens in life. We, we hang out with little groups who have the same basic things in common. But because you're entrepreneurial, that means that you're interested in creating your own service and there's millions of dollars. You know, last year alone, there was over $10 million in grants that weren't even asked for. I mean, I met people in the Himalayas who were investigating the sex life of the ant, and they had a four-year grant. I mean, I'm serious. I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But they had eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. Ford, the Ford Institute gives away millions. The Hughes Institute, millions. All you've got to do is come together as a group and figure out how to get through the strange language that they use to ask you to get money. It's all there. I mean, right now, I don't know how many of you are freshmen. It doesn't make a difference whether you're freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors. If you come together with a group, at least you'll have the experience of trying to get money from the government for a project that's going to create jobs. I mean, we, don't, we, we offered to make a series of tapes on how to get grants, and the bureaucracy wasn't interested. They don't want to make it easy for you. It's ridiculous that we don't have we don't have videotapes that you can like they do in Japan. I watch little kids six years old in Japan with their videos, all at different speeds because some kids were were, were fantastically ahead. Other kids were a little slower. Other kids were more philosophical, and they all had their little dis. When I asked a school teacher in the United States, when I sat through, they asked you to, if your child's going to school in the United States, they ask you every parent to sit through a full day. And I did. And I said, why haven't they got videotapes? Oh, she said, it doesn't develop the brain properly. I know. <laughs> I know. Nobody wants to let go. It's, it's neophobia. We can't move to the next place. We can't realize that in the computer I'm just putting in, uh, I have 19, 16 million alternatives in color. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling. Mind I can, I mean, it's unbelievable as we start to get ready to reach 200 and 300 million people, right? And what we can do with that by not only just selling products and good products and doing a, and doing a thorough positive thing in service and, and free enterprise, but also just to make each other aware of each other. Uh, that we do have, uh, <laughs> never mount anybody, he's cracked by, he's eccentric, he's whatever, because they want to make sure that by saying that, that they're not. But that's why he said, don't throw your pearls before swine. <laughs> you know, who needs to let the negative side know your thought process if you do it? If we announced tomorrow that we had a maximum tax of 10 percent, and we brought in the thousand top families from South Africa and from Hong Kong with a billion dollars each, 
we would have full employment within 12 months, 24 months. If two men can create 250,000 jobs known as the Amway, Amway, how much easier with five major airports? I mean, the potential is unlimited in statistical location, but this is a political decision that people have to make. And I'm not suggesting a negative thing to Canada. I think Canada is a fantastic country, but it's got to stop its negativity. It's got to stop. It's anti-hero, anti-free enterprise. A co grants against the privates, against a, a competitor in the same town and wipe the other guy out. I mean, that's stupidity. But you happen to be a good buddy of the political. The game has got to be broken open. It's over. All this hide, I mean, this is why the Kennedy thing is coming apart. It's over. The cover-ups are over. It may take another five years till we find out that who brought him down there, and they brought him down and just nailed him, right? They want to show it. Could have poisoned them like they did in the 16th century. Easier to, to poison guys. But not if we want to blow you away and teach you a lesson. I have nothing else to say. Stars right